Es gibt großartige Neuigkeiten und zwar haben wir den Meilenstein von 5000 YouTube-Abonnenten geknackt, was mich unglaublich freut und an dieser Stelle ein großes Dankeschön an jeden, der diesen Kanal bereits abonniert hat und regelmäßig mit einem Like unterstützt. Und in diesem Zusammenhang habe ich natürlich lange überlegt, was ich machen kann, um diesen Meilenstein Gebühren zu feiern. Hinter den Kulissen habe ich tatsächlich mit einigen ganz großen LinkedIn, man kann sie wirklich Genies taufen, gesprochen und das vor allem für uns als Leaders Media, um immer auf dem neuesten Stand zu bleiben, als auch am Ende für unsere Beratungskunden immer die neuesten Strategien in ihnen an die Hand zu geben. Und dabei habe ich ein Interview mit Jay Alec geführt, der auf internationaler Ebene aus meiner Sicht einer der besten Content Creator, wenn es um das Thema LinkedIn Tipps geht, ist und habe ihn für eine Stunde interviewen dürfen. Und wirklich aus ihm rausgekitzelt, was seine besten Strategien waren, innerhalb von zwölf Monaten wirklich von Null auf über 100.000 Follower zu wachsen. Und ich muss sagen, ich habe vieles auf LinkedIn schon gesehen. Diese Stunde mit ihm hat mich komplett geflasht, muss ich sagen. Ich habe das Interview auch lange für uns intern behalten. Habe dann irgendwann gesagt, dass unsere Mentoring-Kunden davon unbedingt partizipieren bzw. hören sollen. Und jetzt dachte ich mir, bei 5000 YouTube-Abonnenten ist der perfekte Anlass, um dich auch an diesem Interview teilhaben zu lassen. Wenn du mehr von Jay in der nächsten Zeit sehen willst, ich habe tatsächlich ein paar Ideen, was ich mit ihm gerne machen will, dann tritt gerne noch unserer kostenfreien LinkedIn-Marketing-Community bei. Dort plane ich in der nächsten Zeit etwas gemeinsam mit ihm. Und jetzt wünsche ich dir ganz viel Spaß mit der Folge. Ich kann dir nur sagen, hör dir das Ding bis zum Ende an. Du wirst es bereuen, wenn du es nicht tust, weil verdammt viel gute und wertvolle Tipps in diesem Interview drin sind. So, I'm super excited to have Jay in an interview today. So, Jay, I have to give you some backstory. So, my wife, she's also ghostwriting on LinkedIn. And at some mm -hmm. day, she was like, I don't know who this guy is, but I found like the craziest guy on LinkedIn. And look at his content. And I was like, damn, what kind of content this is. And all the posts that I read, I was like, this could be like posts that I... I love and I would never come up with these ideas and ever since then I followed your content and I'm like I have to talk to this guy so Jay I'm super excited to have you in this interview and try to get the most out of you in this interview to talk about LinkedIn and copywriting thanks for being here well thank you first off for the very kind intro please say hello to your wife hello <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here and let's make the best out of this. Hopefully we'll have a very productive conversation. I'm ready. I'm ready. Perfect. So when I look at your profile to give the people a little bit background, I think it's it's okay to say that you're like one of the biggest or maybe also the biggest like copywriter on LinkedIn. Would you, would you agree or what what title would you give yourself? I'm just a guy who writes copy and who shares a lot of copy knowledge. Uh, love it That's whoever's very, number very one honestly yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah it's it's been pretty fun it's been the content's been doing pretty well I'm, i'm just glad people love it and it's just succeeding at a massive global scale yeah. for me that's the big biggest achievement you know everyone around the world loves it and it's just growing bigger and bigger and for me yeah. you know i couldn't be happier honestly And I think you hit just a couple of days ago or weeks ago with this milestone of 100,000 uh, followers, right? And maybe the this first. is something, the, the first, <laughs> love it. I, I always say that, you know, got to keep yourself motivated because a, a lot of people reach a certain milestones yeah. and then they just stop. It's like, I heard it about I've like reached YouTubers. this. Yeah, like YouTubers yeah. that hit like a million subscribers and most of them, they fell like into this hole and they lost their motivation because yeah. I aimed my whole life for this million. And I'm like, so I love the, I love the motivation. And looking back and it's a crazy journey. It's like just 12 months ago that you started with a thousand like uh, followers, right? What about oh, yeah. you say, say like the biggest the biggest lessons along the way was there like a moment a year ago where you said like i'm going all in into linkedin or what was the moment that you said i'm starting to take it serious mm, but that's a good question uh for me the entire journey has been a full 17 months so i started mm -hmm. posting on january 1st 2022 so what, last what year happened on what happened on christmas eve or On no, New Year's it was New Year's it was actually it started two years before that. So <laughs> oh, really? yeah. I started posting on January 1st, 2020. 
yeah. quit after five days, got zero <laughs> likes, lost my motivation. Then I did the same thing next year again, January, you know, New Year's oh, resolutions really? or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Then Love January it. 2021, I started posting again. I lasted yeah. for a cool five weeks. <laughs> and then uh, in January 2022, I was like, no, I'm either going all in or I'm not doing it at all because I'm not wasting okay. another, you know, several yeah. weeks or months. But it took me five long months, man. It took me Crazy. five long months to gain yeah. some traction. And yeah. to so my first milestone was reaching 100 likes on a post. Yeah. That was the five month like mark. And it's great that you are saying because we have clients of ourselves that we teach like content and some of them mm -hmm. come into programs and they're like, Robert, I still got after three posts, no viral post. Where is it? And it's good that you're yeah. saying it, that it can take up to five months to get there and 100 or likes. more. It's a big milestone. Yeah. Okay, five oh, yeah. months in and then you got like, okay, now it's getting a little bit traction or you were like, I just keep going. To tell you the truth, I had no clue. Because I'm just being completely honest. Love it. Yeah. I never had a plan. I, I just went in. I had fun. I tried to support everyone. Um, I, was, I was doing a lot of commenting. And then something clicked around that commenting part to the point where LinkedIn themselves, they even reached out to me. And they said, uh -huh. you're doing something we've never seen anybody do on this platform. You're actually, so we know we have comments, right? Because people are using them to respond, to reply to posts. But what happened was they told me like, you're using them as a strategy and we see you. <laughs> and I truly was, and I truly was. I was actually, I noticed that by being in as many places as possible, especially during the day, because people yeah. post during different times, you know, in on different times during the day. Mm -hmm. so there are a lot of creators, like, for example, we're in Europe. So there are a lot of creators who post early in the morning, 8, 9 a.m. There's a huge group who posts in the afternoon, 1, 2, 3 p.m. And there's also creators who post late in the evening. So I figured, let me have my three LinkedIn periods during the day so that yeah. it looks like I'm on the platform 24-7. <laughs> so now nobody can miss me. Right. Yeah. Because oh, like if you're studios. only yeah. Yeah, on the platform, like super early in the morning, you're missing out on a lot of the global audience. Yeah. And if you're only doing it like in the afternoon, you're missing out on all your European and Australian audiences. So I was like, let me create my time periods during the day. And I That's went genius. in like in the morning, I was like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Then I would post in the afternoon, for example, I would stay for for like an hour straight. Then in the afternoon, I would go in again and see if I have people that I actually followed who were yep. posting. Then I would go in again. But mm. the trick was every single time I was commenting, I was putting myself out there. And then I unlocked the next secret and the next secret and the next secret. Commenting is a whole game. It's a whole strategy. But yeah. that's, that's when things actually clicked. Commenting really helped because it helped me get that reach. I love it. I love it. And I would love to jump in there because I have lots of people that are starting with content and uh, getting into this game. But most of them, they're like, I put this content out there and I wait for people to like it and to interact and stuff like that. Mm. But they don't go any further. They don't comment anything. They don't help any, any other creators. So what was your like... Did you have like a list of people where you checked like there, I want to check every day if they have something or did you just scroll through your feed? What would be like mm. the best advice? Yeah, so I have a pretty short lesson here that I typically teach people. First is we have to understand the algorithm and how it works. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm the first to tell you, stop caring about the algorithm. Just focus on the quality of the content. But you do have to understand how the game works, right? Mm -hmm. You could be the most talented basketball player, but you can't just take the ball and carry it to the next basket. You have to bounce it off the floor. You have to pass it. You have to know how to play, the, you know, by the rules. The platform is literally called linked in. Mm -hmm. You have to be linked <laughs> in with other people, with other networks. You can't just stay inside your own bubble and be very one directional because that is one directional. What you describe If you're just posting something and expecting this magical return of people and information and likes and replies and reshares, it's not going to happen. But the algo is actually, the LinkedIn algorithm is actually thinking like a human. 
basically it says if you're out there supporting other people yeah we'll send people your way to support you so the more you're out there commenting on other people's posts it yeah. gives off a signal to the algorithm that hey this person is very active on the platform they're a supporter they're DMing people. So now those same people that you are interacting with, they will get your content recommended to them or if anything, their network will. Mm. So you I have to be out so there. Deep. Yeah. I Yo, it's it. so deep, man. I recently I posted it. my I, yeah, yeah, I recently I, posted my LinkedIn commenting matrix. Oh. So I, that's where I explain like the real depth. I actually went 12 steps deep, 12 stories deep. Love into it. just yeah. one comment like yeah. every single comment has 12 levels to it yeah we can talk about it but I would, it's, I would it's take, a super deep I strategy take, yeah. i would take two questions that i got uh, in my mind first is there like an effect you have this effect if someone likes your post you will get seen more and more posts of the same person because the algorithm figures like you like the content you like the creator you want to have more of that stuff This is something that we always used and worked very well. Do you have the same for like, did you uh, see or observe the same thing happen for comments? So if anyone like reads your comment and enjoys your comment that he sees more of your content or also of your comments, is there something yeah. like that that you saw? So with comments, it's actually even better. You don't even have to wait for any yeah. reaction from the algorithm. Because here's the way it works with comments. If your comment is good enough, it's going to attract people's re likes and replies yeah. as well. Yeah. So with that, it's going to prompt people to click on your profile and check out what you're doing. So they don't even have to wait to have your profile recommended. They're right there. They see your comment. They like it. They're like, boom, let me check what this J guy is about because his comments are awesome. Then they land on your profile and depending on how optimized, how well optimized your profile is and how yeah. good your content is. Like basically it's like a landing page. Your profile should be a landing page. So yeah. if people land on your profile and they like what they see, they're going to hit that follow button. And it's a direct correlation. The better your comments are and the more you comment, essentially the more reach and exposure yeah. you're giving yourself. And with that, more people should be clicking on your profile More people should be visiting. And of course, depending on, you know, how good your profile is, more people should be staying as well. Okay, I'm, I'm sold on commenting. Yeah, you got me. <laughs> There you Any, go. Comment more. <laughs> But comment better, you? not just quantity, yeah. okay? I mean, that would be like my second question about this, that most of the people are really like pretty lazy on commenting, like great post, keep it up or something like that. Or it takes them a lot of time to come up with a great comment. Do you have like some advice to find the sweet, sweet spot of doing a great comment and also being like some kind of being efficient or how do you approach your, you have to be pretty good at commenting after these times, right? Yeah. Give, oh, me your, yeah. give me your best stuff. Yeah. So I can give you my main lesson that I, t I just coached this today at a session to a large group of people. Oh, perfect. My, yeah. my main lesson for comments and I, I could give you 50, but my main <laughs> one, I, I kid yeah. you not. Like if you do this right, all the other 49 lessons are just going to fall into place by themselves. Love it. So never, and I repeat, never comment for the author only mm. so the author of the post mm. here's what i mean by that oh, if you awesome. robert yeah posted something about nescafe three and one is not coffee please stop calling it coffee <laughs> okay yeah and then people start responding down there but people will will start to saying you know yes i agree yes you're spot on i disagree blah 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 all of these comments okay they're fine but They're very much one directional. They are just directed towards you, the author. But think about it. Hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people will see your posts. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, especially if you are among the first commenters, among the yeah. first people to see that post. Let's say you just posted it 10 minutes ago. Oh, there's not a whole lot of reactions, not a whole lot of impressions, views, not a whole lot of comments yet. So this is your chance to write a really good comment mm -hmm. 
that everyone who's going to come to that post will now get a chance to react to. So I say, never comment for the author only. Comment for everyone viewing the post. Everyone. Can you give an example with the... With the I can give you an example. Yeah. So I would tell you, okay, Robert, you're wrong and here's why. And then I would give you three or four or five scientifically backed stats <laughs> about coffee being inside of Nescafe. Yeah. And then I would tell you, thank you, good morning, have a nice coffee. <laughs> That's what I would write to you in my comment. I guarantee you that would blow up. That would get like 100 plus likes on a comment, not the post yeah. itself, the comment. So that's what I mean by really good comments that prompt people's attention. Now with that, because I'm among the first commenters, which is kind of a luxury, yeah. and because my comment is so, so welcoming to everyone reading, not just you, yeah. everyone who comes to the post. Now what's going to happen is people are going to see that essentially as an extension, almost like an add on, uh, yeah. like a mini post under your post. Yeah. And I, mind you, these don't have to be super long comments. These could be two lines of text. Yeah. It could be one line. But as long as it's not just for you, it's for everyone. And then all of the things that I just explained five minutes ago happen. People click on your profile. And then if the profile's good, they will hit that follow button. That's the way it works. That's genius. So, I mean, there will be content creators out there who will, I can imagine, like, understand your strategy behind it. Did you have, like, reactions to it when you're, like, commenting on your... Oh, posts, no. Or they're really happy because you're bringing a lot of people to their post as well? Not at all, because because your comment is still directed towards them. But <laughs> yeah. but it's the thing is, it's not just them. So, so it's a win-win situation, right? Yeah. As an author, like, you don't get it. Like, yeah. you're still, you still feel like I'm talking to you. Yeah. It's just that I'm also talking to everyone else. You know? But this is a really cool picture in my mind. So not that you're like trying to do something well for the person of the post, but also like all the other people in the room that are also trying to comment something, you're, you're trying to integrate them into your like mini post. I really love the picture. Yeah. And it's There you easy go. IT to to understand. Okay, okay, gotta test that. Gotta bring yeah. gotta bring your audience in, you know, because when you think about it. If you're only posting, I always tell, tell this to people, if you're only posting, like even ideally, Robert, yeah. if you're posting seven days a week, which is crazy, my, I, I should tell that, should say that to the people. If you're posting seven days a week, that's only seven times. So basically only one time per day that people will see you and hear from you. They will. Yeah. So if you're posting every day at 1 p.m., people will hear from you at 1 p.m., And then they have to wait till the next day to hear yeah, from no you. No comparison But, to the 27 hustler. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But if you're commenting throughout the day and people see you in different places, especially if your comments are that good, yeah. you're going to be everywhere. People are going to notice your brand. And then with that, your brand authority, your credibility go goes up. And with, you know, by doing this a lot of times, For a long period of time, like for a month or two or three or four, it doesn't even matter. Your brand authority significantly goes up. Yeah. Now what happens, there's like a side effect reaction. It's not just you getting new people from the comments to land on your profile and following you. All the people who you've been supporting all this time and commenting on their posts every single day, they will now start returning the favor. You don't even have to talk to them ever in the DMs. It's yeah. just a human reaction. If someone someone is always help looking out for us, you know, talking to us 10 times in 10 days, I will naturally be inclined to check out your profile too. So what's going to happen naturally, a lot of those creators who you support, they'll come back and they'll support you as well. And then it becomes a thing. It becomes this snowball so, effect. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a long-term strategy for sure. Yeah. But... I know thousands, and I kid you not when I say thousands, have already used my strategy and they're achieving similar, if not the same results. Crazy. Smaller profiles can get up to 50, uh, sorry, from anywhere from 50 up to like 500 new followers every single day, Crazy. even on the days that they're not posting. Yeah. Once you cross a certain threshold, 
which is what I do and what I did, what I have done, what I'm still doing, every single day, I can get anywhere from 100 to 1,000 followers, new followers. Yeah. And I, I emphasize, even on the days that I'm not posting, yeah. just because I'm out there commenting, really being strategic with it. Love it. Love it. Do you have like a routine for it? Because I can, I can imagine that it takes some time or do you yeah. say like nine in the morning, like at one or like at six, I check in for half an hour or how do you do it? Yeah. So I do have a routine and it's actually pretty stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm being pretty I'm honest. Be honest yeah. <laughs> today, to, so today I wrote this post where I mentioned that I like on any given day, I can churn out anywhere from 500 to 1,000 comments in a single yeah. day. Yeah. And people were like, how, when, what do you mean? I've posted about my commenting strategies before. So what I do is essentially, I have to, so, uh, you asked this question earlier, so I'm now going to answer it. Sorry for that. So what I have is a list of people. I call it my daily engagement list. Oh, that's I have a list of people who I don't even know, by the way, like yeah. it's just my preferred content. And I've put every single profile in a Google sheet. I've put their profile links inside of there as well. But I, what I've also done is I've put in their posting times to the minute. Uh -huh. So I know exactly when they're Ooh. posting. So now it's going to happen. If, you, if your list includes 20 or 30 names, 20 or 30 you know, LinkedIn creators, you're going to have groups. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to have five or six people posting at 9 a.m. You're going to have, you know, six or seven posting at 1, 1.30, something like that. You're going to like you're going to have so these you groups. Build your routine around these groups. When exactly. But let me tell you about the stupid part. OK. <laughs> <laughs> And I kid you not. This is like ridiculously simple that anyone can yeah. do it. I, I mean, I used to. I no longer have just because my mind now even knows when to show up. I would set an alarm on my phone three minutes before 9 a.m. So I kid you not, 8.57. And my alarm name on my phone would be called Robert, J, Taslim, Richard, uh, Sophie, yeah. Matt. Like I would include the names yeah. of the creators as my alarm. Love so that. then I set this alarm. I hear the alarm and I'm like, oh, time to go on LinkedIn for five or 10 minutes. Let's and then I have ready. three minutes. Yeah, I have three minutes of prep time. I yeah. go in, I open up six tabs. Yeah. It's <laughs> at this point, it's like 8.59. I wait for 9.00. I kid you not. I refresh. I'm ready. I have six new posts. I'll just skim those posts, right? And yeah. then I'll write super good comments. Yeah. Um, and then I'll just leave. Yeah. Honestly, I'll just leave. So I will spend like 10 minutes on that and I'll just leave and wait till the next commenting period whatever you want to call it why is no one talking about this i am <laughs> yeah, yeah you are but i mean i'm doing linkedin for like three years or something and i've done like i don't know 500 posts or something in this time but i never heard about there was some voices left and right about like that comments are valuable yeah but that's it but learning this from this strategic dimension and also getting this exposure when you're not posting that's really genius yeah and being a little bit playing yeah. the game got to play the game got under you have to Love understand it. that you know any social platform really any yeah. social media is a game yeah i mean i'm not trying to gamify to a point where you don't feel the human connection no you absolutely yeah. do and you absolutely should absolutely. but you have to understand that in the back end of things There is an algorithm, okay? There is a machine and a set of rules that determine whether your content will be distributed or not, whether your post will perform or not. And ultimately, it falls on to you and your activity. So what you do with your activity every single day, that's the ultimate key. And this is what I'm trying to do. I was basically trying to create a strategy out of my own activity 24-7. But I tried to make it as efficient as possible just because I knew I wanted to do so much. And I don't have 24 hours to sit on LinkedIn and just comment and post and find new content. Nobody has that time. Would you also recommend for someone who really is starting out, like maybe a little bit struggling with the idea of content and stuff like that, would you recommend to just start like commenting for, for a couple of weekends and once and keep the content part like 
a way or would you always say do both in some time of of yeah like parts so i would i would have to give you two answers to this yeah because i know a lot of people especially when you're just starting out on linkedin a lot of people are scared to start posting or they just don't have that habit of writing every day and showing up every day like that consistency still isn't built up yeah. it's not there it just doesn't exist so to those people if you're just not ready but you don't want to lose your precious time just waiting and waiting day in and day out i say for a whole month just yeah. consume content and comment as much as yeah. you can and here's why this this matters because comments are essentially posts, which is what we talked about. It's just that they're much shorter. But what's going to happen, again, I'm going deeper, but what's going to happen is you will build a habit of writing every single day. Your brain will start to think faster. Yeah. Your brain will start to generate ideas and responses faster. You will be able to write and communicate your thoughts in a much more concise, clearer way. If you're immediately jumping into posts and then you don't get any reactions just because your profile's <laughs> empty, you have no followers, yeah. it can be discouraging. It can be discouraging. But you don't have the problem with comments. Yeah. That's exactly. But with comments, you're just give, you know putting yourself out there. You're giving it, you're giving. You're essentially not getting at that point. But that shouldn't be a problem because your profile's empty anyhow. So my advice is just to get into the rhythm of things, just to build up that consistency, that confidence, that clarity, that courage. Mm -hmm. Four C's. Is that four C's? Consistency, <laughs> clarity, confidence. Ooh, that's a new formula. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so just honestly, for a whole month, just comment a lot and consume a lot of content. And then you will start to see how things work, how other people do it. And then you can just take the pieces that work for you, things where you're like, oh, I could do this too. And then once you're finally ready, People will have a familiarity with you already. Yeah. Because they you know, people will know. Yeah. Exactly. For a whole month, you've just been everywhere supporting everybody. And I guarantee you, a lot of creators, and I know a lot of them, who have gone viral with their very first post on LinkedIn. Yeah. They've done this. So uh, they've ooh, built up genius. their familiarity. Yeah. Yep. They've built yeah. up their familiarity with a lot of creators. Yeah. And then when they finally do post, they'll just DM the people, their link. Hey, yeah. yes, I mean, I just posted for the first time. Would you mind supporting me? <laughs> Hell yeah. You've been supporting Let's me go. for the last month. Like, of course I would. And then imagine if 10 quote unquote bigger creators at the same time give you that boost and like and comment on your post. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But yeah, just it's a strategy in, in any yeah. way you look at it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. When we switch to content, how many times do you post on your own account every day or like five days a week? Or I have no clue. I have no clue how to answer that question. <laughs> Just because when it comes to posting, and everyone yeah. who follows me knows this, I'm the most inconsistent oh, LinkedIn really? creator ever. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> certain weeks, like what happened last I don't know if it was last week or the week before. I posted like in my 17 months on LinkedIn. Yeah. It was, this was the first time I posted six days in a row. Oh, really? I've never done it. Never, ever. And apparently, uh, so this, yeah, it's already third week in a row. So I've done it two weeks You're in a row a now. Streak. Yeah. I'm on a streak and I don't know if I'm stopping, but honestly, before, the, like, just, I mean, these are the last two weeks. It's super fresh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've just been posting sometimes two times per week, sometimes four, never really more than four. Like I would post on a Sunday and then I would be like, I don't have time on a Monday. I don't have time on a Tuesday. Let me just post something on a Wednesday. And then Wednesday happens and I'm like, ah, I was too much. I don't want to do Thursday. Let me do Friday. So this is all to tell you and anyone who's listening that you don't have to post every single day. If your yeah, content is actually good yeah. quality, yeah, you don't have to do it. Yes, your reach will be bigger. Yes, you will have more exposure overall on average if you do keep up that momentum and that streak. But all I'm but saying it's a is hustle. Yeah. Exactly. You don't have to. You don't have to. After a certain period of time, 
it will come back to haunt you just because everyone goes through burnout stages. Everyone goes through writer's block. Everyone, every single yeah. person in the world, it is inevitable. It but is. this is why I'm saying like people come to me always and they're like, how did you maintain writing every single day? And, I, and I'm like, I don't. Well, you ask the good question. I did write every yeah. single day. I just did not post um, every single yeah. day. So I always, you know, give this lesson to people. Write daily. Yeah. You don't have to publish it. No one ever has to see it. Just use it for practice. Yeah. So write daily if you want to write better daily. That's the Love lesson. it. And I got to admit, and uh, Jay, huge compliment for your content. And I really have the feeling that each post is like a mini a mini master work. It's really, really exceptional content that you are posting. Thank you. Is there, is there a system behind it or is it your creative genius, how you come up? Because so many people are struggling to even come up with like basic content and basic tips for their target audiences, ta yeah, target audiences. And I see your content and I'm like, how would you even come up with these ideas? They are really genius. So if you had some advice for this part, I would love to hear it. By the way, are we, are we going to have video recordings of this public mm -hmm. or just audio? Also video, I hope. If it's okay, because okay I was just laughing for, for the audio listeners. I was just Easy. laughing. And if nobody saw me laughing when he was asking that question, <laughs> I genuinely was. Just because, again, I'm... Yeah. I'm the worst. I'm the worst person when it comes to planning content ahead of time. I kid you not. It's And always with the creative genius people like that. My wife, she's really good at LinkedIn content. It's the same thing. If you would ask her how she comes up with these ideas, she's always like, I don't have any clue. Exactly. <laughs> I don't have any systems. But seriously, though. So I post at 1230 every day. Yeah. Nowadays, at least every day. But I, yeah. my posting time is 1230 European mm -hmm. Standard Time. So most days I will just finish writing my post at around 1130 or 12. And then I would like uh, my friends, Lara Acosta, phenomenal LinkedIn creator, number one yeah. woman uh, in the UK, female creator in the world, all that. Luke Matthews, goats of LinkedIn. The three of us are writing buddies and we make each other better. Like whenever we write something, we'll just send it in a group and we'll, and we'll be like, give me feedback. So we all do That's this. Cool. Yeah. So I'll most of the time, I'll be the worst at receiving feedback <laughs> just because I send it to them at the worst time. Yeah. It's like 10 minutes before I'm supposed to schedule. And they're like, dude, like you, you know, it's the last minute. Why? And I'm like, I literally just wrote it. Yeah, <laughs> I literally just wrote it. But yeah, honestly, um, I think so. That's my process. That's my yeah. problem. But when it comes to generating ideas, I am just lucky enough to have been in the business for a very long time. So yeah. I sometimes forget the fact that I started writing online in 2000, 2010. That's okay. 13 years now, four, 14th year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so in these 13 plus years, I have so many experiences, so many stories, so many different examples, so many lessons, yeah. so many insights, just, you know, to be frank. And I honestly just ask myself, like, what is something I still haven't taught people? Because uh, for those of you, for, for those of you listening who don't know, I am a teacher. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also teach copywriting at the university level. So I'm a professor by nature. Yeah. And I, I, my, like my natural instinct is to teach. So mm -hmm. that's why a lot of my content, as you said, is like it. a yeah. mini class because I genuinely approach it that way. I want people to feel like this is something that they've learned for the very first time. Or even if it's an idea that's already existed, I want to present it in a way that's the clearest way ever, mm -hmm. the most unique uh -huh. angle ever. Yeah. Just because that's the teacher in me. And again, I'm very lucky to have so many things inside of this brain. And at, at any given morning, I'll just be like, okay, what haven't I taught yet? Or I will also ask myself, like, what would you want to learn if you were in that position six months ago, 12 months ago? I genuinely ask myself that question. And then I'm like, okay, well, there's this cool thing I found about LinkedIn events. There's this cool uh, thing I found about commenting um, and, you know, 
what I just explained to you uh, during specific times, being early, things like that. And then I'm like, oh, I haven't spoken about it yet. Let me make a post about it. Because it's not the same if I maybe have mentioned it in a comment somewhere or at an event, mm. at an interview, at a podcast versus posting about it permanently on my profile. So yeah. this is how I approach generating okay. content. I always ask that question. Yeah. What is something that I ha have never said before? Or what is something that I would like to learn today if I were, you know, in that position six months ago? And I really like this teaching perspective because if people like approach content for the first time, they're always like, I don't know, I have to talk about my offer or I have to talk Ooh. about, I don't know what I have in my mind. But really this idea of giving like advice, giving tips, like thinking about what I can teach my audience. I really like this uh, approach, uh, approach, what is this approach? Yeah, to, to get started with the topic. Do you see common mistakes when people start like with content or if you have a look like on the platform on LinkedIn, you see a lot of content I can imagine every day. Do you see like common mistakes where you're like, ah, this is really something I see every day that I would also give like maybe other creators as an advice what they could change? Honestly, length. Like, oh, really? like people write, write super long things. <laughs> yeah. I always advise people to uh, download an extension like authored up. I don't know if yeah. you've ever heard of authored up, but it's Love for it. those yeah. of you listening, authored up essentially replaces your LinkedIn editor uh, where you would normally type in your post before you hit publish. And it gives you a preview for the mobile view, the tablet view, the desktop yeah. view, like how your post would actually show up once it's published to the pixel, like to the actual dot full stop. So what I do is I actually, this is how, so I do content reviews for, for clients, for people, yeah. for uh, LinkedIn creators as well. Like they would send me content that would pay me to review it and make cool. it better. So what I do is I immediately screen share, we open up authored up, I copy paste their content into <laughs> authored up. And then I'm like, okay, Do you not see this preview? This line is super long. This needs to be yeah. shorter. This right here is super dense. Mm -hmm. This paragraph is super long. And then they're like, oh, I never thought about the visuality of it. And I'm like, the visuality matters yeah. more than the content itself. And let me tell you why. This is, I mean, I've done research on this. This is something that I've been, been you know, into for years and years now. The human brain, like there's a psychological element when it comes to reading. Yeah. The human brain doesn't read content first. It sees mm -hmm. content first. <laughs> And I always give this example of you're sitting at a bar, you're sitting at a cafe, and you see a beautiful girl or a very handsome guy, you know, sitting on the other side. And you want to approach them because you're like, mm, I want to meet them. I want to introduce myself. You like them. Like, that's your first reaction. Ooh, I like them. You approach them, and the second they open their mouth, God, no. You're <laughs> very disappointed. Yeah. This is the same thing that happens uh, on your posts when people click that see more button. Because there is always that yeah. cutoff, that <laughs> preview, right. and, and then like, you have see more. <laughs> exactly. And then you see these huge chunks of text. <laughs> Huge yeah. paragraph, nothing is visually optimized because at that point, all your brain sees is just blocks of text, unoptimized spacing. Yeah. It doesn't look optimized for my eyes. Yeah. Like it just doesn't look attractive. Uh, yeah. But if the that brain signal is different, if it's positive, if your content is actually visually attractive, if the spacing is good, if everything looks like it's in its right place, Then, and only then, you read. Before that, you see. You don't read. So that's how the human brain yeah. works. Yeah, I get it. I love it. Yeah, this is something that I also see a lot, and we teach people a lot, lot about it. And this is nice that you, like, yeah, agree on this because you can't stress it enough how important this is, yeah, that people really want to jump into the text and read it because sometimes you really have these blocks of text and I'm like, who would even jump into this text? I wouldn't even start because it's so long and so, like, clustered. Um, that's really cool to hear. Yeah, I got it. I got a question for myself. I, I'm at the point, like, uh, having... <laughs> 
20,000 followers, I think. Nice. Um, built up in the last last two years or something. But I really want to, I want to keep it coming. The first 20,000. Yeah, I really want to hit like 100,000. I, I think I have to follow you a little bit on a national level. What mm. would you like advise me for the next 12 months to focus on? Let me ask you this, though. So I will open up your profile. We don't have to share it here just for the audio listeners. Do it. I but try I will, to I'll, translate it for you. Uh, yeah, what I'm doing there in German. Okay, I understand German, by the way. Oh, really? I, oh, I teach, Jay, I teach German. I'm a German <laughs> teacher, by the way, just so you oh, know. Really? <laughs> yep, LinkedIn bietet aktuell eine einmalige Chance. Wann nutzt du sie? Uh, okay. Mit LinkedIn Marketing zu mehr Anfragen, Kunden und Wachstum, als ambitionierter Unternehmer, Gründer oder Selbstständiger. Uh, okay. Give me, oh, by the way, give I'm me just, the juicy stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'm listening and I'm, 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 if you want, I can screen share. I don't mind. Yeah. I can, I can give you exactly what I mean. Show you exactly what I mean. Um, I have no idea where my LinkedIn tab is. Okay, it should be this. Okay, it should be this. So do you see your profile? You should. Yes, see it. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. So I want to talk to you about conversion strategies on LinkedIn. But first, I want to ask you. So you said you have 20,000 at the moment, 21. Mm -hmm. What is your goal? Is it to grow your following or is it to get more bookings for your trainings and for your services? Or is it kind of both? It's. I think it's kind of both. Because which I'm one is more important? Uh, if you ask like that, I think more bookings. You sure? Now, I mean, I think it's a consequence or not. If I grow my following, so my main strategy is to get people like into webinars. I think we're really good at teaching people in webinars and showing them they're like the next step to come into our world. Mm. So I'm really into this, like, how do I get more reach? How do I get more people into my world? And then mm -hmm. can send them to my like sales funnel. Okay. If you have any other equation, I will take it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So... I want to I want to go into something. So what you have currently as your main link right here. It says Neues LinkedIn training, okay? Mm -hmm. And then it leads to this landing page, uh mm -hmm. neue Algorithmus Checkliste für mehr Reichweite, Kunden und Umsatz, okay? And then it says Checkliste sicher. Mm -hmm. And then it uh, prompts people I guess to sign up for a newsletter. Yeah, there is like a VSL, like a video sales letter. Exactly. Then, yeah. But here's the, the thing, the though. Bottom. But here's the thing, though. Is that where you want your money funnel to start? Or do you have a direct sale offer, um, like a consultation yeah. or a direct training sale? I got I got so this course here's the smallest course of ours is like 250 bucks. So I saw okay. it also with like Justin Welsh where he mm -hmm. put it like in front of like straight on his profile. And I was like, well, do I, can I do it? Don't I do it? So I'm open to any advice. If you would say, put it right in there, I would really like put it in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, let me tell you exactly how, so from what I understand out of all mm -hmm. these months, this is something I actually coach people on. Mm -hmm. So I talk about the rule of three a lot. Mm -hmm. So the rule of three is essentially for any short form content. If like your profile is essentially a short form piece of content. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. It is. So it's a landing page. So mm -hmm. if you're repeating your main offer for three times in this very short time span, ah. it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. But here's where you are currently not using this to the full potential. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in your banner, Mind you, so first lesson, when people visit your profile, this is all they see at first. They are mm -hmm. still not reading the headline. They're still not reading anything down there. All they see is the profile photo and the banner and whatever is inside the banner. Now, mm -hmm. just from your banner, can I understand what you're offering me? No. So LinkedIn bietet aktuell eine einmalige Chance zu für for what? To do what? Add one more line of text that signifies growth or sales or whatever. I might have a chance to 
was, mm. irgendwas. So add that. that. Yeah. Ah, and then it. ask, wann nutzt du sie? Mm -hmm. Then I ask that. A, I had a different uh, subject line today. I just changed it today. Mm. And the, a different one was, and I would love to hear your feedback, was if your LinkedIn content should also... You can say it in German, just so you ah. know. You can say it in German. <laughs> <laughs> Wenn dein LinkedIn content auch zu zahlenden Kunden führen soll, dann kann ich dir helfen. Because we have a lot of clients that are actually posting on a regular basing, a basis, but they don't know how to convert them. And we teach them how to like direct message them to do webinars and stuff like that. And I really liked the headline before, but I don't know if you have something, something else on your mind. I take it. I like, to, I like the value prop of the headline, but why are you posing it as an if? Ah. Why are you saying, wenn dein LinkedIn könnte? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you just say, lass dein LinkedIn lead to paying clients? So Love basically, it. lead with the value. Don't tell people, if it could, would you? Yeah. You don't want to give them a chance to say no. Like this is sales 101. Mm -hmm. you, never, you never give your customer, you never give the person on the other side, person you're selling to, a chance to say no. But if you're asking them, there's always a chance to say no. That they know, right? There's always a chance to say no. So instead of, you know, starting with then, so mm -hmm. an if, mm -hmm. immediately go into last time LinkedIn and then mm -hmm. the outcome. Mm -hmm. So now you're actually telling them this is possible. Okay. You're, you're essentially sending it out as a fact, sending it out as a message. You can do this. You're mm -hmm. here. You're right here. You're right here. And then right below that, use your call to action, a very short call to action. Mm -hmm. Now, I do want to ask you, what is your call to action? Do you lead them to a call or do you still lead them to this training uh, where they have to training. put in their... Okay, well, yeah. then here's what you do. You write, access your whatever, mm -hmm. one-time training, exclusive training. Is I don't know if it's kostenfrei. Yeah, it's kostenfrei. Yeah. It's free. So... Mm -hmm start your free training or access your free training or watch my free training, whatever the actual verbiage is, put that in your banner mm -hmm. because you want them to know immediately. Let your LinkedIn lead to more closings and more sales. Mm -hmm. Watch my free webinar watch. to learn, to learn how, you know, whatever, whatever the name is, watch my free webinar to learn, learn how. And then this exact call to action that I'm pointing at right here should reflect what you wrote here. So instead of saying noise LinkedIn training, make it actionable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make it actionable. Make it say what they're going to get. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. whether it's watch my free webinar, watch my free, watch our, my free training, or whether you want to go to the outcome, start getting more clients today, start getting more LinkedIn sales, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, that should be the case because now here's what happens. The rule of three is starting to roll. You have mentioned your offer now once very clearly mm -hmm. in the banner. You have mentioned your offer twice very clearly in the profile link. And then when they scroll down, it gets stronger and stronger. And then when they scroll down, your first link, the prominent link, okay, mm -hmm. should be the actual watch the training. Mm -hmm. But please kill all this neue algorithmus checklist of <laughs> Kill this because it's not giving me the same message. Like yeah. I feel like this is something totally different. Ah, yeah, I was. You see, I don't even, I don't even throw. understand that this is a training. Yeah, I throw as much as possible in there, and they, they choose clarity. What they want. Yeah, I love it. Clarity. So sell but them please. on the next step. Yeah, yeah. So put it first. Mm -hmm. Put it in the first place in your featured section. Also design a really neat, if you can, same sort of style, same sort of font. Mm -hmm. This thumbnail from YouTube as well, mm -hmm. design it in this same sort of style, same sort of font, same color, same everything. So that everything looks unified. It looks like a mm -hmm. full package. This looks like it's three different packages. Mm -hmm. There's one branding in the banner. There is yeah. a second branding for the YouTube. There's a third branding for Again, right. we don't know what this is. I don't. I still don't know what the, this is. You have to tell me clearly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, then the rule of three applies completely. So you have a super clear value proposition mm -hmm. and a call to action right in the banner. Mm -hmm. Then you make it stronger with the 
primary link, and then you make it the strongest by the primary link in the featured section. And everything speaks to the same offer. Now, mm -hmm. this is your primary offer, meaning you could have more things to offer. You could still offer a YouTube video. You could still offer a newsletter. You could still offer something else. But what you offer first, that's the thing that's your moneymaker. This is why I asked you at the very beginning, what is your primary sales offer? So always put that offer first in the banner, in the main link, in the featured link, always. And then right. if you have other things to offer, put it in the second and the third and the fourth, whatever fifth place ah, in the yeah, featured section. This is now, so we, by the way, you asked me about what I could do with the content. I'm telling you what you could do with the profile because I'm telling you the content doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You could have the best content in the world, but mm -hmm. if people are landing on your profile and they're confused as to what to do, mm -hmm. you're losing out on all those visitors, all those profile views and impressions. You're losing out. The yeah. content could be superb, but if your profile isn't, you're just missing out on all those conversions. Yeah. Got so it. always focus first on the profile, mm -hmm. then on the content. Because then once the content starts rolling out, people will come back to this beautiful, perfectly optimized profile and everything works like a well-oiled machine. Love it. So coming back to the recording. <laughs> so, so I have this perfect profile now, set it up with your uh, roots of three. What, you, what would you focus then? Find, find, uh, find some time in my day to do this commenting strategy. I would do this anyway, because I'm too mm -hmm. excited for it to do it. Anything that you, is there anything to do about like content that, that does a trick or is it just keeping up doing good work or something? So then you go to my calendar and then you book my coaching program, which is four <laughs> seven. Love it. <laughs> and then I teach you everything. Okay. And I will show you everything. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. So no, but seriously, then everything else starts to get into play. You start to yeah. figure out. So if your offer okay, is yeah. very clear, you will be very clear about who your audience is. So yeah. who is that type of person you want to attract yeah. on your profile? This affects your content significantly. Mm -hmm. Because if you're selling, let's say to agency owners, okay, like super, mm -hmm. like super agency owners with like 10, 20 people as employees, yeah. your target audience is not solopreneurs. So you don't want to talk about struggles and stories and experiences as a solopreneur or benefits for solopreneurs. You want to talk about the agency life. You want to talk about clients of an agency, experiences in that arena, how to optimize your processes, how to do this and that for agency owners specifically. Yeah. But if you want to go broader, okay, think about where those agency owners live, in what niche, in what broad niche. Yeah. They live in the niche of marketers or yeah. business owners, business mm -hmm. owners in general. Uh, so now what you could do, you could expand your offer a bit more. Mm -hmm. Okay. But sneakily, strategically, this isn't about your offer now. This is about your reach of your yeah. content. So you would get more views, more people, more followers. And this is how you kind of strike the perfect balance between converting more and educating more and growing more. Mm -hmm. By simply growing slightly broader with your yeah. approach, like who are you talking to in your mm -hmm. content? Like I could be talking to copywriters specifically, mm -hmm. but I don't. Mm. I talk to everyone who wants to improve their writing. Yeah. Literally everyone. Ah, yeah. uh, got it. I never, I never say copywriters listen. Copywriters should do this. Copy copywriter is probably my least used word. In my content, <laughs> I actually have a word cloud. Yeah, I actually I have mean, a word cloud in my analytics. I think copywriter is probably among the least used, <laughs> but writer, writing, write. Yeah. That's different. But you're also attracting the right people, right? People that are interested I am. in writing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And want to like leverage LinkedIn for their business, I can imagine, right? Exactly, because I teach copywriting to yeah. CEOs, I teach them to content writers and agencies, I yeah. teach them. To, to anybody, essentially, because I know who my target audience is. And my target audience is a niche, mm -hmm. isn't super niche. My target audience is slightly, slightly broader. Yeah. So 
Yeah, it's it's about really striking that balance with who your profile is speaking to Mm -hmm. versus growing your following slightly, ever so slightly every now and then with every single post. But you have to make sure that whenever people are landing on your profile, you are giving yourself the best possible opportunity to either convert them into a follower or convert them into a buyer. Always, always, always. If they don't want to buy, at least get them to stay. At least get them to follow. Yeah. Love it. Do you have any advice or are you doing any pitching in your content, like talking about your offers or doing something about like what I can book for you or your products or your coaching programs? Or are you just let your profile do the magic? Never. So I never sell. (laughs) And I always tell people never sell. Um, Again, you you kind of hit the nail on the uh, you hit the nail in the coffin. You hit it right on the head. Your content is supposed to work for you. Yeah. Okay. And if you really, this is what I was saying at the very beginning, stop focusing on quantity, really focus on the quality. You could, you could post two, three, four times per week, but if your content is genuinely good, Mm -hmm. it will attract an audience to your profile. Yeah. And you don't necessarily sell in your post. Mm -hmm. You sell on your profile. Got it. And this is exactly the exercise that we just did 10 minutes ago. When people finally do land on your profile, you you can have the best posts. You can tell people, hey, I have three slots open. I'm open. I have my coaching program. But then people land on your profile and they don't even understand that you're offering a coaching program. So Ah. the post in itself doesn't matter. So never, I mean, this is my approach. I'm not saying it's the approach, obviously. People sell all the time in their content. They're probably making a lot of money, maybe even more money than I ever will. But my approach is really the perfect balance between growing your following and still earning a lot of money. So again, my approach is really lean into the quality of your posts. Try to never sell because if your posts are good, people will keep visiting your profile anyhow. And then the beauty of your profile, the optimization, the clarity in your offer, leading them three ways to that main offer, to that main click to buy and to give you money. That's what's going to do the selling for you. You don't ever have to do the selling. All you can focus on is sharing your stories, sharing your knowledge, your tips, tricks, advice, insights. But then your profile is like a 24 seven sales agent who does the work for you. So that's my approach. Never sell in your content but let the content lead people to your profile and then let the profile sell by itself. But in order to do this, again, the profile has to be optimized first and the content has to be really good in order to get that sort of reach. Yeah, love it. Last two minutes, Jay. I want to keep our interview in time. LinkedIn audio, is this something that I have to have a closer look at or do you have any experience or tips to to have a look at it? Oh, absolutely. LinkedIn audio is my current favorite thing about um, LinkedIn in general, honestly, just because 95% of people on LinkedIn, whenever they do live events, they use video. Mm -hmm. But video on LinkedIn is so clunky just because you have to use a third party tool like StreamYard or whatever, Restream. With LinkedIn audio, it's it sits right on the platform. Uh. It's a tiny little, like, I don't know if you ever used Twitter Spaces or Clubhouse yeah. back in the yeah. day. Clubhouse, yeah. Literally the same thing. You can minimize it. The audio plays in the background. There's no comment section where everything is constantly loading. <laughs> yeah. All you have is a reaction where, like, as you're speaking, people can vote on things or drop me a heart if you like what I'm saying. Or but it's give me live, a thumb. right? It's live, completely okay. live. But the beautiful thing about it is you can bring people onto the stage. Okay. And people can cool. ask questions directly. Cool. So what we do, what I do in my LinkedIn audios is I theme them. Like mm-hmm. today we're going to talk about commenting strategies. So just for the yeah. sake of it, let's use that as an example. And then people can raise their hands. Like there's an option to raise it, your hand and then you click and bring someone onto the stage with you. And then That's everyone cool. can listen, yeah. you know, and then you talk as soon as they're done, you bring the next people on and so on and so forth. So it's really a huge community um, event. And I think video doesn't provide that same community element. It just can't. It can't. Yeah, you're right. You're right. 
Jay, thank you so much for this great interview. Most and welcome. That are excited right now. Where can they find more of your stuff? Where should they go to? So, oh man, I have so many things going on right now <laughs> to tell you the truth. By the way, when is this going live? Do you have any idea? Oh, I don't know yet. Yeah. Maybe okay. Like so one or two, uh, one or two weeks. Okay. So I'm just going to drop it right here. So what we're doing is, so you can find me on LinkedIn every single day. If you want to work with me, I do hourly consultations and I have a coaching program for mm -hmm. everything. Basically, <laughs> just kidding. Um, You can go to my website, heyj.com, for a lot of uh, materials and a lot of information. But some new things are coming. I'm launching a paid community, cool. closed community for anyone who wants to learn how to write better and sell better. So yeah. it's going to be a really tight-knit community, nice. and we're going to have a lot of useful things. People have been asking for it for, for months now. Yeah. I'm, you know, it's coming. I'm pulling yeah. the trigger, yeah. Second thing, we're launching a podcast on LinkedIn. No way. So that's new. Yeah, that's we're going to have cool. that announcement as well. And what else? What else? I must be forgetting something. Oh, there also might be a course in there somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to tell everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, just follow me on LinkedIn and, and yeah, everything's going to be announced there. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, Robert, this was awesome. Thank you. And really good questions. Thank you for these. <laughs>